time this is the 16th of March, 2019. Article in the Los Angeles Times, written by Ralph Vanderbeeding. That's V A R T A B E D I A N. Title How a 50 year old design came back to haunt Boeing with its troubled 737 MAX jet. A set of stairs may have never caused so much trouble in an aircraft. First introduced in West Germany as a short hop commuter jet in the early Cold War, the Boeing 737-100 had folding metal stairs attached to the fuselage that passengers climbed to board. Before airport had jetways, ground crews had lifted heavy luggage into the cargo holds in those days, long before motorized belt loaders were widely available. The load of the ground design was a plus in 1968, but it has proven to be a constraint that engineer modernizing the 737 have had to work around ever since. The compromise is required to push forward a more fuel efficient version of the plane with larger engines and altered aerodynamics led to the complex flight control software system that is now under investigation in two fatal crashes over the last five months. Boeing's problems deepened Thursday when a company announced it was stopping delivery of the aircraft after Federal Aviation Administration decision Wednesday to ground the aircraft. I don't think anyone would accept delivery of the aircraft. We continue to build the 737 MAX airplanes while assessing how the situation, including potential capacity constraints, will impact our production system, the Chicago company said in a statement. You're probably better off shutting down that assembly line. You're going to have to, because if the black boxes, the information proves what we all suspect to be true, the plane will become an albatross. The crisis comes after 50 years of remarkable success in making the 737 a profitable workhorse. Today, the aerospace giant has a massive backlog of more than 4,700 orders for the jetliner, and its sales account for nearly a third of Boeing profit. You want to bet those are all going to disappear? But the decision to continue modernizing the jet rather than starting at some point with a clean design resulted in engineering challenges that created unforeseen risks. Seems to be insurmountable challenges. Boeing has to sit down and ask itself how long they can keep updating this airplane, said Douglas Moss, an instructor at USC's Vetriva Aviation Safety and Security Program a former United Airlines captain, an attorney, and a former Air Force test pilot. We are getting to the point where legacy features are such a drag on the airplane that we have to go to a clean sheet airplane. Few if any complex products designed in the 1960s are still manufactured today. The IBM 360 mainframe computer was put out to pasture decades ago. The Apollo spacecraft is revered history. The Buick Electra 225 is long gone, and Western electric dial telephones are seen only in classic movies. Today's 737 is a substantially different system from the original Boeing, strengthened its wings, developed new assembly technologies, and put in modern cockpit electronics. The changes allowed the 737 to outlive both the Boeing 757 and the 767, which were developed decades later and then retired. Over the years, the FAA has implemented new and tougher design requirements, but a derivative gets many of the design grandfathered in, Moss said. It is cheaper and easier to do a derivative than a new aircraft, says Robert Dutry, an engineer aviation safety consultant and founder of American West Airlines, which purchased some of the early 737 models. It is easier to certify it. But some aspects of the legacy 737 design are vintage headaches, such as the ground clearance designed to allow a staircase that's now obsolete. They wanted it close to the ground for boarding, Dittry said. Andrew Skull, founder of Tiger Century Aircraft, which develops cockpit safety systems, and a former Northrop Grumman chief engineer said Boeing has had a good record modernizing the 737, but he said they may have pushed it too far. 
To handle the longer fuselage and more passengers, Boeing added larger, more powerful engines. But that required it to reposition them to maintain ground clearance. As a result, the 737 can pitch up under circumstances. Software known as Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System was added to counteract that tendency. It was the software that is believed to have been involved in the Lion Air crash in Indonesia in October. The software erroneously thought the aircraft was at risk of losing lift installing because of malfunctioning sensors and ordered the stabilizer to rear to put it in a series of sharp dives that ultimately caused the plane to crash into the Java Sea. What happened on the Ethiopian airline flight is less clear, but tracking data shows that it also encountered sharp changes in its vertical velocity and at one point in its climb after takeoff lost 400 feet of altitude. The FAA grounded the jetliner Wednesday saying that new satellite data showed the Ethiopian airline flight dynamics were very close to the, those of the Lion Air jets. Ethiopians sent black boxes recording devices recovered from the crash jet to France for analysis after refusing to hand them over to U.S. authorities. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board still plans to send investigators to France to help its Bureau of Inquiry and Analysis for Civil Aviation Safety. That's really telling that they wouldn't give it over to the United States. Airline crashes seldom are caused by a single factor, and the two 737 accidents may yet involve poor maintenance, pilot error, and inadequate training. But it appears increasingly likely that the Boeing software system and the company's lack of recommendations for pilot training on it may have played an important role in the crashes. The entire need for the software system is fundamental to the jet's history. The bottom of the 737 engines are a minimum of 17 inches above the runway. By comparison, the Boeing 757 has a minimum clearance of 29 inches, according to Boeing specifications. The newer 787 Dreamliner has 28 inches or 29 inches, depending on the engine. All right, folks, so what we've got here is pretty much the end, I believe, of the 737 MAX 8. Could also end up being the end of Boeing. They're going to end up with massive lawsuits. What they've done is they've redesigned this airplane instead of starting with a new one. And the plane is totally unstable without all this software. And we know what software is prone to. It's called bugs. We'll see how this thing unfolds. You sort of know what I think. You want to read the rest of the article. It's most revealing. If this data from these black boxes verify that the software was the issue, these planes are toast. No one will fly in them. No one will buy them. You think not. Think what you like. I do. The link will be attached.